Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Broadhead tuning is a myth. Yeah, it is. What is there to adjust here? Anything? Nothing? You got that right. Um, anyways, but the only thing you probably could do on this thing anyways is just maybe make sure that this is sitting even and, and well, it is anyway, so we've got nothing to adjust here. You can't tune a broadhead. Not technically. Now, I don't care what kind of broadhead you got, if it's a fixed piece of solid material or if it's a fixed with replaceable blades or mechanicals, okay, of any style or shape or whatever, okay. There are things that are going to affect flight. And, well, the biggest thing is going from a field tip to a broadhead, right? So your broadhead needs to be designed along the same idea as your field point. Otherwise, well, you got some adjusting you need to do. Now, I'm going to just lay it out this way to try and keep this video short. I'm going to try anyway. Well, assuming that your bow is absolutely dime perfect, dialed in, laser tracked, string to rest to arrow, that's all perfect alignment, blah, blah, blah. You don't have any axle to axle issues with a stretch string. Your cam timing is perfect. And you're shooting great groups with your field points on your arrows that you've chosen and your poundage you've chosen for your bow for not only for target, but it better be the same for hunting too. Otherwise you throw out your whole damn sight system, in which case you need to start learning how to shoot your bow for targeting and hunting at the same poundage rates, okay? I mean, seriously. But let's assume your entire bow in itself is fine. But then you go and you throw a broadhead on this thing and it's like, <laughs> or it's, <laughs> okay? What is the problem? Okay, well, field points, they do create not a wind tunnel per se. They don't create a tornado of any kind, okay? But they do create a bit of a wind push system and there's some aerodynamics involved here, but how the wind hits. But as the arrow is spinning, there's nothing on the field point that moves the field point this way or that way. That's all steering back here. So we got to make sure that our back steering is actually good fletches or veins and they're evenly spaced along the arrow and they're in good shape and you know our knock is in good shape and our knock fits our string properly you know so that it releases correctly etc and if all that is good which it probably was because you were shooting your field points then you're making groups like this then there is nothing wrong with your equipment there is nothing wrong with your arrow in itself because your arrow is spinning like really straight and so is your field point because you haven't damaged or bent it and if you did damage or bend it you probably screwed your insert because now it's wobbling and it's not just going to be your tip it's going to be your you've wrecked your insert too um but let's assume everything is fine okay now you go and you screw on a friggin broadhead okay and you spin test and everything's good now let's assume there is absolutely nothing wrong with your broadheads either. They're physically fine, they're built to spec, they're right dime on, they're nice and sharp the way you need them to be and don't ever use one of those drag sharpeners even on broadheads because you will screw your broadheads. You will create a concave and then you'll throw everything off balance and then you wonder why you got problems, okay? So try and use a proper sharpening method with a, um, the, the stones, okay? and the different stones and do it correctly, okay? Just do it the right way. You might have to make a jig or two in order to do it right, which means you're taking your blades off of here or just buy new blades. It's up to you, I don't care. You, you don't need, by the way, razor blade sharpness to the point where you can literally shave with your uh, blade on your arrow. That's a little way overkill. It also makes for a very weak and malleable edge that can fold over on you very easily and then really screw up your flight pattern. Now. There is something that has always been overlooked. I have watched a lot of these videos on how to tune your broadhead, and they do all kinds of stupid crap they don't need to. And there's one very important key point they're all missing out on that I'm gonna help you with. And this should hopefully fix your problems regardless of the broadheads. Now, assuming everything spins right, there is no damage to your broadheads, they're built to spec properly, all that crap is all good. Now, if you do find any problems, fix the problems. Replace the parts if they're replaceable. If they're not, buy broadheads that have replaceable parts. Then you're golden at that point. Now, <laughs> if we look at, um, let's just use this. This is actually the best broadhead as an example because I can leave the blades out on it. 
Okay, so we're looking at the broad head. Now, assuming you haven't even had to knock tune an arrow because it's dead straight anyways, um, let's look at the, the cock vein, as they call it, okay? Now, I'm a left-handed shooter primarily. I do shoot right-handed as well, but let's stick with the lefties here. Um, you can just do the math backwards for right-handed people. Now I need to find my off-colored vein, which is my yellow. So I'm pulled back. My yellow vein is exactly uh, horizontal to me. And look at where my broadhead sits. Now, that is a very bad position. All right? Very bad. Now let's close the broadhead. <laughs> if we can. I, I hate these broadheads. There we go. Now, let's do that same thing again. Look at the position of where that broadhead sits to the veins. My cock vein has no alignment whatsoever with either one of those blades. It needs to be this way, which means my cock vein needs to be horizontal to me where it belongs in order for this blade to be this way. This way, this is in alignment with my cock vein. This is in perfect alignment with the side veins. Now, when you install an insert, there's a couple things here. Different broadheads have different lengths of threads. Okay? Now, on this broadhead, we may be able to... Well, actually, we can do it to you closed. Okay, so let's take this one. Okay? This is pretty damn, pretty damn even. This one is almost perfect. Okay, so this is in alignment with my cock vein. This is in, in alignment with the division of these two veins. So that's actually good. All right. So now when it spins through the air and goes through, it has less chance of steering off course. And that when it steers off course, it could actually pull up into the right. It could pull, it could even pull itself down to the right if it's not clocked to the veins. All right. You have to understand some basic aerodynamics here as an archer, otherwise you're kind of yinkered. And this is never mentioned on any of these videos. Okay, now if I take this broadhead off, I'm going to screw this one onto it. Okay, now cock vein, that's out. Put it up cock vein up, that's still out. That's a problem. But we take this one and we thread it in. Now it's even. How is this happening? Well, that's pretty simple. I'm going to show you how that happens. Going shoulder to shoulder. The broad head to my left, <laughs> okay, is the one with the two, this is the one to my left. That's longer, but guess what? The shaft is shorter, okay? And the rage broad head, this one here, well, it's longer because it's shoulder to shoulder, it's longer, and it has more threads too. And it also is going to give it a different stopping point in the insert. So what is overlooked here is the alignment of the blades to the cock vein. You need a blade that's aligned to your cock vein to give it the best possible chance at spinning at the same clock ratio, creating hopefully the same kind of a wind effect. Okay, three-bladed broadheads are the easiest for this because each blade will line up with each, each vein, including your cock vein. And that makes it great for keeping it on course and straight in the air, okay? So this way you don't have to hopefully make any adjustments at all, right? And if you do, it's going to be very minuscule and minor. And it won't be changing your spine. It won't be changing the length of your arrow. It won't even be changing your draw weight. All it's going to mean is you may have to adjust your sight a little bit, a minor amount. Now... Minor is better than major, okay? Adjusting your sight minor is better than screwing around with your rest and knocking it out of alignment completely with your string. Because remember, your arrows were shooting absolutely perfect. Your bow is set up absolutely perfect. 
and you were fine with field points, but as soon as you threw those broadheads on that didn't line up properly for the same clock rotational path, that's why they're steering other directions, okay? And it's going to be hard to straighten that out, okay? Uh, without a lot of serious screwing around with stuff that you don't need to. So it kind of makes sense, to me at least, having the, the clock of the veins matching the clock of the broadhead, which means if your broadhead doesn't line up, like our one broadhead does, okay, that means you have to remove that insert, clean it up, pop it back in, pop in your broadhead, get it aligned with your, your clock vein, especially if it's only a two blade, but even if it's a three blade, you will be able to align all three blades with all three veins or fletches, okay? Get that aligned and then pull it out, put some glue on there, okay? Preferably something that's a little slower drying because you're gonna have to push it in there and then ensure that everything's lined up before it sets. So try and use a slower drying glue. Um, once you've got that, you should be really golden at that point, okay? And you can test this against one that's completely out. Let's see where it goes. And then take the exact same arrow, same broadhead, same insert, disassemble Stephanie, clean up, realign for the clock, and then try again and see what your difference is. And it should improve it. Because this is one thing that nobody talks about. And I know myself through a bit of aerodynamics, myself for what I do understand of aerodynamics because of building and flying RC planes, helicopters, and quadcopters for several years, I understand quite a bit about this stuff, okay? And you can apply that same knowledge base to these. So if this arrow here is sitting, what is it, yellow? Yeah, green, green, yellow. So if this is sitting like this, that is almost perfect. This actually has to come up just a little bit to be perfect with this. And that adjustment can be done. Now, can it be done without removing the insert? Actually, yes, there is a way to do that. Because every insert, unless it's a flush mount insert on the inside, which these are not, okay, I could just take this here and I can run it on some sandpaper okay keeping it flat where i can have a machine that has the rotator to the sand block and i can just rotate some off of there and just keep checking it as i go along until that blade is in perfect alignment with my cock vein once it's in perfect alignment with this two bladed thing then i stand a better chance of this arrow flying absolutely fantastic okay and this can be done with any broadhead, all right? It's not limited to broadhead at all. It can be done with any broadhead. Um, the only hard broadheads that would be hard to figure out would be a four-bladed broadhead. But for that, you could fletch your arrow with four veins to accommodate a four-bladed broadhead. Uh, but then you get into a whole other ball of wax. So I'm not quite sure how you would work the clock system on the four-blade other than doing a slight offset of each one so that it covers th the three main points properly with each blade out of the four. It's gonna be interesting, that's all I can tell you, okay? But um, generally, not many of us are shooting four veins on our arrows, so um, that's only a select, maybe less than a, less than a half a percent of archers in the world actually shoot with four veins. So, you know, I wouldn't be too concerned with that unless you're one of them <laughs> but you'll have to figure it out that I think would be what you would probably consider a form of broadhead tuning if it wasn't so mythological because otherwise there's nothing to adjust on broadheads you can't do anything all you can do is replace um, broken parts bent parts um, you know, parts that aren't running true. You could be up, buy a brand new broadhead and everything could be perfect on it except the shaft is screwed. It's, it's got an out of round shaft. It was mismachined. And I've seen that happen too, by the way. Um, and if you shoot at a hard, if you hit a hard surface, this is only, this has got some place space inside the insert 
And if this hits in the wrong kind of an impact, it can literally bend inside, which will make this go screwy on you. And you may or may not get your broadhead back out or your insert. I've actually had a few of them get stuck on me because, well, the fuel point shifted over. But I've also had defective inserts too, so this is why you don't glue stuff in right away. Make sure that your insert is not a problem. Make sure your arrow is not a problem and everything should go just dandy for you after that. But I would start with that before I would ever think about screwing around with my bow, especially if my bow is already running fine with the fuel points and the only difference is the broadhead, I would check the clock position to make sure everything is on an even plane of creation of wind tunnel so that everything works correctly and steers correctly. Because an out of pitch blade is not gonna work for you. It's kind of like if you have, if you, if you shave too much off the edge of a propeller, okay, it's gonna vibrate because it throws the blade out of balance, right? Well, that's exactly what's happening here when this blade or when these blades, okay, or in this case, a two blade system, when the one blade is not in the alignment with your cock vein. If it's not in alignment, it's gonna be an off tornado and it's gonna do all kinds of weird crap. We want it to do good crap, okay? So that's what I got for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give it a shot, let me know how you make out. Till next time, see you in the next one.